Salut everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the latest release from the team of PKOS, the release 4.0, and this release changed everything. Let's get into it. As always, let's start with a little bit of context. First thing I want to say is like we did try and review PKOS 3.0 six or seven months ago. It was one of my uh, really like enjoyable discovery at the time because they were like doing something totally different on a Ubuntu base. So I'm going to put the link on the description below like that. You're going to understand like the overall philosophy of the distro because the philosophy itself didn't really change with this release. But what really changed is what is under the hood. They move from Ubuntu to Debian. So PKOS is mainly a distro which is uh, oriented toward gamer and content creation. And you also have like a, a, a side uh, which is really related to like a programmer and people who really want to tweak their system uh, with a, a containerization uh, system like a distro box called Apex, which is not Apex, APX. Sorry for the pronunciation. I don't know exactly like how to say that. But you're going to have also like the opportunity to play with your little container if you want to go further. Everything is out there, ready to go, uh, set up by the Pika OS team. And I have to say, like, uh, the philosophy didn't change a ton. I actually think uh, they did a lot of ironing out compared to the previous version based on Ubuntu, and it makes the experience way better. So let, let, let's talk about it. Let's dive into it together. So before we jump into the positive, I'm going to get a coffee. And yes, I'm getting a coffee because uh, some of you guys are sponsoring the channel directly, Patreon or the YouTube membership. And uh, this coffee is on you. I really appreciate the support. And without you, the channel couldn't grow the way it's growing. I can buy hardware. I can buy games right now. This is really what I've been focusing on uh, for making more tests. And uh, already, guys, if you want to you know, see this channel growing, I really count on you guys uh, to help me and help the channel financially uh, to reach the goal uh, we are trying to reach there. So thank you very much. Now the positive. So the positive, I'm going to start straight up. Like we move from Ubuntu and Debian, it's a positive on its own. And I'm, I'm going to say it, I think Debian is a great base and I would say a better base compared to Ubuntu to realize this type of project because it's more, I would say, like, uh, you know, the root, right? Like you arrive at a point where if you really want to tweak a distro, you want to start from the, the mother distro rather than start with a, you know, like a branch of the other one. Because we all know like Ubuntu now, it's, it's their own thing, but they're still based on Debian. And even if they bring a lot of value added, I still believe they also bring a lot of like restraint uh, when it comes to uh, developing and, and creating, I would say, like a uh, new environment and especially like there. Let's make it clear, like this Debian release is a big game changer and you can see it through the way the dev were able to customize compared to what they were able to do with Ubuntu is staggering. The other point I want to mention here is the fact that now most of the packages which are set up on the repo of Pika OS, is they come fully self-compiled okay like which means like they are compiling uh, themselves the package they are maintaining them and they are pushing them with special optimization so we have lt optimization avx2 optimization and o3 optimization which kind of make me think about cache os and they, they are like going in that direction because i still believe this is the future uh, to have package like optimized like that but you see like they were able to do it on this Debian base, which is which is just crazy. Uh, the other value added you're going to get is that if you are a Debian lover like I am, so I'm not hiding it, I really love Debian. And I thought it was really hard to run Debian with the latest of the latest. So for example, like if you want to install uh, KDE 6 Plasma on Debian, it's possible, but it's kind of a pain because you are using repo, which are, I would say, like not dangerous, but like, you know, uh, already rolling edge and in testing phase. So you might put yourself in a position where you're going to break your system and you're going to have to fix it. It's possible, but there, 
what they have done, like they repackage everything. So you're gonna have the latest GNOME 47 available on your Debian distro, aka Pika OS. You're gonna have Plasma 6 available on your distro, Debian. Again, this is just crazy. And also Hyperland. So having a specific ISO with Hyperland, which they provide, is actually smooth. And if you want to go further, you can also have, listen to me, a cosmic desktop available uh, through the repo. So you, you have like those choice of really recent desktop environment available right off the bat. You have nothing to do. You just install them. And this is great. Now, when you come to the interface themselves, uh, they have their own package manager, Pikman, and they also added a special GUI, which recoup all the different source of package you can have. So you could upgrade if you are using, for example, like Flatpak, uh, the, the native package at the same time with this little GUI uh, application. I thought it was pretty nice. It's working very well. Like I think the overall interface is looking good, the UI. And so if you want to just do GUI, no problem, you can do through that. And it's, it's a nice value added. Uh, through their application selection. There is a lot of other applications. I won't be covering all of them there, but I think the updater was, was pretty smooth. The other application I want to talk about is the driver. Okay, so first things first is like the driver are going to be installed and ready out of the box, whether you have an NVIDIA card or MG card. The way they're going to be set up is going to be just flawless. Okay, this is one of the like small amount of distro which install the latest nvidia driver and set them up correctly like i can't count them on, on my hand right now like uh, even less like uh, there is maybe like three distro all overall will come like already pre-configured with the right setting for your nvidia card so if you are using nvidia card and you want to jump into the gaming world of linux this one is ready out of the box and, you know, I'm, I'm always insisting on that because I know there is a lot of people out there who believe that their driver are installed, but it's kind of like half-baked and they have not the full experience they should have on Linux and they are blaming Linux. But it's not really a Linux issue. It's more a configuration issue related to the drivers themselves. And I have to say there, they did a good job. I double check everything. This is awesome. And because we are talking about the driver, they also have their little application which is a, a Pika OS driver manager. And this application is awesome because you can switch on the go from any type of driver on your machines. You are on the latest beta, you want to roll back, no problem. Uh, you want to switch between a different type of driver. I'm talking about the open one and the closed one for the blob, for the NVIDIA, no problem. You can do it one click, you reboot, you are good to go. And, and this is awesome. So just for you to understand, they were able to repackage all the driver now they also give you a gui which gives you the opportunity to switch really cleanly out of the box and this is great now because we are talking about the driver i'm going to talking about the gaming experience uh, the gaming experience is top notch we are at a level of cache os right now on this distro sometime i had a little bit more fps so this is a margin of error but i will say we are there we are at a level where you can have great experience on debian out of the box no tweak no no headache you just install you are good to go and and this is great they also added in this release uh, a little software called falcon which is the equivalent of like the game mode application out there to really push your pc to the limit when you are gaming it's just a command line i did try it on my machine it didn't make a lot of difference but it's a little plus that you can try you know and tweak yourself and have fun with it I think this software could bring a lot of value if you want to avoid game mode and use their, their specific, uh, I would say, like game enhancer, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good one too. When it comes to content creation, OBS come with all the best features out of the box. I think it's the latest or before latest version. You have the browser, which is included in it. It's a native version of OBS is going to work flawlessly on your machine. My opinion, it's a zero thought uh, to the implementation of OBS for the content creator. And uh, if you want to go further and, for example, install DaVinci Resolve, you have all the Debian scripts which are going to work to install uh, DaVinci Resolve on your machine. It shouldn't be a problem at all. And also because they have their containerization system on the side, uh, you could also use that uh, to install DaVinci Resolve 
no problemo, la mamano. And now it's it gives me the perfect uh, segue to the other main application integrated in PKOS, which is going to let you go further than the Debian world. It's called APX. So I, I mentioned it in my previous video, but I'm going to mention it again. If you are scared about Debian and sometimes, you know, some of the packages that you need not being available, uh, you can still use APX, which is kind of like a distro box that lets you containerize any type of application environment you want for uh, your, you know, uh, mental sake. <laughs> I'm saying mental sake because sometimes like some of the packages are not available on the Debian repo. Uh, they are not also available via yeah, pack style. And Distrobox is a really easy way to say, oh, uh, I need this package from the AUR. How do I do? Well, I start uh, uh, APX uh, container with Arch, uh, go to the AUR, launch this application, boom, I'm good to go. And because it's really out of the box, in my opinion, it's a great value added to circumvent uh, the limitation of Debian itself, which is great. Now let's talk about the negative. Uh, while I, I did the stream, I noticed right away that the distro doesn't boot from a Ventoid disk. It's, it's a non-issue. I think they told me they're going to be working on it uh, with the Ventoid dev and also on their own you know, ISO to see if they can fix it. But as we speak, uh, the ISO available are not launching with Ventoid. So if you try to install the distro, you're going to have to burn a full USB stick and plug it to your PC to install it. And I know like it's, it's to me, it's a pretty violent detail because a, a lot of the users out there are used to, to just plug Ventoy and, and get their ISO starting. And they might think it's because PicaOS doesn't work, but no, it does work. It's just not compatible with Ventoy as we speak. So be aware of that. The other negative I have to mention, and I think maybe this one is a little bit opinionated, but I, I think I think it's a big one still. This distro uses the bootloader called Refined. So on paper, Refined is, is the best bootloader out there uh, because it has so many options. It's looking really good from a graphical standpoint. Uh, it's compatible with almost everything. So it's, it, it's kind of like the, the go-to if you don't want to have a headache. But the problem is like, even with this bootloader, like no bootloader is perfect. But with this bootloader, like the issue I had with having multiple hard drives on my machine is that it will install uh, the EFI like bootloader itself. It will install itself on the first NVMe uh, drive or first SSD uh, you have in your list of SSD in your BIOS. So on paper, it's not really a problem, but it can become one uh, if, uh, for example, you are using Windows or if you just erase your, your first hard drive and you're installing uh, PicaOS on, on your second hard drive, well, you won't be able to boot uh, without, uh, you know, a lot of tweak and installation and whatever. So uh, I think Refine here is, is not the best choice. We talked with a dev out there and they were using Refine to circumvent over issue uh, their user base mentioned. Personally, I, I would I would have chose uh, Grub, even if sometimes it breaks. But for the last three years, I didn't have any issue with Grub, and it, it will also like circumvent this issue related to the EFI uh, partition, like installation, which is out of control. There, it is what it is, guy. I just I just want you to be aware of it. Uh, maybe they're gonna, you know, create option like let's go with Grub or Refine. I don't know in the installer. But I think this one was, in my opinion, a, a little bit of an issue. Now, uh, now I'm, I'm really going into the detail, like that kind of like doesn't really count, but I'm going to talk about it. Uh, when, when you use the GUI, they have a lot of application through the GUI and, and welcome PicaOS. And uh, some of the windows are already small when doing an update or whatever, and I couldn't read what was going on. And I think it was kind of like a missed opportunity there just to make the window bigger and the font a little bit bigger to read, you know, the log and whatever was happening in the background or just hide the window. I don't know. I felt like the size of the window was too small. So you have to be like, hey, Max, you are going really deep there. Yeah, because I don't have a lot of other things to say, guys. Right. Like the distro itself is actually really good. And now we are just talk talking at the application level because I have nothing else to say. So you get the idea, right? We are at a point where PicaOS is almost Perfect. I'm going to use this word. It's a big word, but this is the result of a lot of work and dedication by the uh, PicaOS team. 
which uh, I believe did a great job, like repackaging everything, moving out from Ubuntu, getting on Debian. And now you have a distro uh, which is extremely solid, which is managed uh, by the team with their own repo with the latest packages. Like you're going to be at the level of a, a rolling uh, edge release type of distro, right? But the base is Debian. So I, I think this is awesome. Uh, again, like maybe this review is a little bit biased because I love Debian. I know a lot of you guys love Debian out there. And I think if, if you are in this case and you just want to use uh, a Debian based distro and have the best experience while creating content and gaming, this is the one to go because it's going to avoid all, you know, like the setup, the headache relating to customizing a Debian. And also the compilation when you're going to want to use, I don't know, Hyperland, for example, on your Debian, it's going to be a mess. Well, with Pika OS, everything is set up for you. And I think this is the real value added uh, out of this distro, custom kernel, latest desktop environment, uh, containerization ready out of the box, you name it, you're going to be solid. So guys, don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to make a full, uh, another full, um, comparison which is going to be around like which is the best distro for gaming it's going to come in the coming weeks it's going to come out in the you know coming weeks so don't forget to subscribe give a thumbs up uh, again if you want to support the channel financially youtube membership and also patreon guys thank you very much for watching you are the best and see you in the next one bisous bisous